at the morgues, bodies of unclaimed heat stroke victims continue to be brought in. They will be buried in mass graves at the outskirts of Karachi. In the recent, uh, since the past few days, uh, the t rising temperatures, and again, Karachi has low plantation, and uh, due to the month of Ramadan and fasting, uh, people tend to get rehydrated uh, because they're working under the sun, and there's no actually no such awareness given to people that how to uh, be safe in such uh, conditions, in such temperatures. These scenes are from outside a hospital where the death toll from the ongoing heat wave continues to rise. I'm present here at the emergency ward of the biggest health organization of Karachi called the Jinnah Hospital. And as you can see, the patients are lying here at the main courtyard and they complain that there has been no electricity here for the last four hours and it is adding to their misery. Relief camps have been set up by various NGOs and people belonging to the civil society organizations. Inside the hospitals, the victims struggle to survive in unhygienic conditions. What we are lacking in the hospital is particularly the medicines and the basic needs supports of life and the medicine and the health facilities which are lacking particularly over here. Reportedly, Karachi's hospitals have treated nearly 80,000 people for the effects of heat stroke and dehydration during the last week. I have come from Tando Adam. I am very poor. I had to sell everything to get treatment. And as gradually the temperatures improve, the incident has raised many questions on the competence of the local government with hospitals lacking basic facilities. Experts believe it is now time for the administration to revisit its policy and make a rapid action force to tackle similar disasters in the future. Daniel Khan, CCTV, Karachi.